movie two. Uh, before I get into bringing up Photoshop and breaking down those three ads, I wanted you to see how Lisa actually indicated, yes, indicated her body text. Look at how her rulers stayed perfectly horizontal. This is not tangenting up or down. Look at how the different, the, um, the separation between the lines, the space between those lines actually is pretty consistent except for the bottom one, um, which is all right. You know, a thumbnail pencil is not supposed to be perfect. There is no word perfect, but it is supposed to show articulation and a comprehension of design, a, 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 an instinct to layer your, your idea on the page with class and clarity so that the client knows and feels comfortable that you can finish the job. And that is what Lisa is going to show as well as you guys are going to show your thumbnail stages in your portfolios along with the finish stage. So I'm going to put this away, but I'm not going to close it. We're going to go right into Photoshop and we're going to bring up the ads that I have broken down into the three necessary. Um, let me find where I put it. It's right there. Yes, there it is. <clears throat> I am um, going to hit the F button so I can cascade that to the full screen. Now, what I did was I broke down Brittany April's. The very first thing that I want you to see is... Um, that she has gotten everything in odd numbers. How many dolphins? How many paragraphs? Um, and how many bodies of text? One column with three paragraphs. She has three dolphins. Try to keep everything that you are doing and keep, um, keep everything in relative odd numbers. Now let's get right into this. Her rules of, of thirds, I've made a layer so that you can see what, what is important to the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds designates that the focal point should never be in the center. It should never be where that white hole is. So what you want to do is you want to draw your eye to the center and then away from the center because it is human perception that, that it would look awkward. It would look too perfect if everything was in the center and you as a person as a visual consumer would not be happy with what you were looking at something would look wrong so try to keep your focus by by bringing items in from the side and to the center but not in the center now I'm going to get rid of the rule there and I'm going to show you first that she has gotten her body text to actually have Roman hanging punctuation or hanging punctuation. In in design, it's called optical, optical text or optical character alignment. And it's available in the story editor. But in Photoshop and Illustrator and After Effects, you can have something called Roman hanging punctuation. So what I wanted you to see was look at how in I've given you a little line to indicate the right hand side of that text. Now look at how the hanging punctuation goes over that, that line of text. In the paragraph menu, which I have right there, in the paragraph menu, when you have right hand flush, on any body text and you want to have Roman hanging punctuation, you want to have your punctuation hang outside of the body of the paragraph, simply have it highlighted and go over to the paragraph menu and go to Roman hanging punctuation and you will have it fine. All right, the same thing is inherent in Illustrator and in After Effects, but do not uh, it's not the same thing in, in design. As I said, go to the story editor, and then in the story editor, there's something called optical text alignment. I'm um, pretty sure that's what it is. I know it's optical text. I don't know if it's the word alignment, but um, you will find it, and it's in the story editor. It's in a pop-up menu in the story editor. So I am going to be extremely picky. If you do not, if you turn in your finish after Mr. Hood or Miss Melibran or any one of the design teachers have helped you throughout all, all of this and if you still do not have Roman hanging punctuation or hanging punctuation is what I should call it, um, you'll be really cut down for that, okay? Uh, and believe me, you would be in your portfolio review should you go after a job. Now what I want you to see on this are the alignments. So let me turn off these two layers and first let me just go command colon so I can show you that in the alignments, in her um, outside of the Look at how the of the um, ascender here of the N, look at how the right hand side of the N actually has the correct margin alignment for the bottom. Look at how the fin on the bottom of the dolphin 
just barely touches the word adventure park and don't think that was by accident that was extremely on purpose all right notice how the left the right hand side of the um, uh, B actually is part of that quarter inch alignment all the way and of course the top of that title bottlenose gives you that nice feel for the um, margin all the way around so I want proper margins notice how I'm gonna hit command colon notice how the word dolphin goes off screen but it's you can tell it's an N and it's very much on purpose um, a bad tangent would be if one of that one of those uh, if the bottom of the N or the right hand side of the N just touched the left hand side of the page and the reason why the B over here doesn't look bad right there is because whoops come here is because she has given me most of that ascender on the page and this is not touching the edge of the page um, here's another place where it could have had a bad tangent but she ended up having an okay tangent because none of this actually touches where the fin would end so be very careful look at how the nose of the dolphin goes over the D notice how the nose of the dolphin doesn't line up exactly with the line that I'm showing you right here be very careful on bad tangents this is almost a bad tangent right there but you can't help some of them all right now what I really want you to see is what I've created in um, something that I have uh, in my visual movement here um, I want you to see how and I've created some arrows so you can see the movement within this project look at how the motion of that dolphin not only brings you into the readability of that body text and takes your eye from off the left hand side and draws you into the center through the rule of thirds and builds proximity of information but look at how it brings you right into the logo look at how beautiful that that happens let me turn those off look at how it the upper dolphins bring you right into the headline and look at how they bring you right into the top of that paragraph Look at how the movement of the graduated background draws you in to the body text and draws you in from the left towards the right. Look at how the entire word bottlenose and the whole word dolphin take you off the page to the right and yet because the human nature is going to bring you straight back because you can't read the word dolphin so you're brought straight back in not only does it bring you off the page but it brings you back on the page and those aren't by accident that was extremely well thought out and that's what I'm gonna do or Ron or Chris or any of the design teachers are going to try to make you understand these types of things that I'm putting on the screen and this that I'm putting on the screen with the grid alignments there's the essence of design that's it look at how the D of SeaWorld lines up beautifully to the um, right hand side of that body text not including the Roman hanging punctuation look at how if I turn off the arrows it lines directly up to the right hand side of the letter I do you think that was by accident heavens no and if it was if the I wasn't right there and it had been halfway it would look awkward it would look wrong so there are things that happen in good design that you need to be constantly aware of all right let's go to the second ad which is going to be Bianca's I'm going to show you the same exact thing that I just did here's the rule of thirds and in the rule of thirds I want you to see how nothing is in the center of that ad but almost I mean she crosses the whole background look at how the lines that are inside of this let me turn off the rule of thirds look at how the lines that are inside of this and first let me go to margins look at how the margins align look at how the the let me get a little closer here look at how the right hand side of the Sherlock Holmes comes directly up and gives you that eighth or I'm sorry that quarter inch or half inch a bleed all the way around and look at how the bottom of a game of shadows is consistent look at how the body text hits the gun and look at how that whole angle brings you up um, those things aren't by accident and I want you to have a, a understand that you can manipulate how a client sees your work 
And that is so important because you want to keep that person as a client or that company as a client. Now let's go into the visual movement of what her, her ad is going to do. Let me turn off the guides for now. Look at how the whole alignment of um, Robert Downey Jr. Um, left hand shoulder takes you right into the gun. That is Robert Downey Jr., right? Yes, I knew that. For some reason I had a mental breakdown there. Look at how the eye and the look of the eye draws you not only into the Sherlock Holmes headline but right into the body copy. Look at how the whole angle of that gun brings you right up on to that side of the page. Again, not by accident. Look at how the entire flow of having half of a figure draws you in to the body copy. Um, look at how the whole movement of the Sherlock Holmes and as you read down, where do you read down to? Let me turn off those other ones. Where do you read down to? You, as you read through this, you read straight down into the logo. Those again aren't by accident. Those are really important to the whole generic, to the whole feel of this, to the emotion of this, to the passion of this. Now. Obviously, the graduation background and the reason that she has this graphic here because that draws you in to the character. So when you place all the movement on top of this, look at how important that movement is to the whole feel. Again, that's why this got a 5.0. Let's go into Justin's because Justin did just a beautiful job in it. In Justin's, let's look at the rule of thirds. Notice how, again, nothing is in the way of the rule of thirds. It's the first thing I'm going to want you to do. Break your rule of thirds down. Place your grid lines in, and for those of you who want to see how to do a rule of thirds, if you grab the cropping tool, and in the cropping tool, if you just double click it, and you have this up here on the rule of thirds, do you see that right there? If you go inside and you double click, or you just click it once, do you see how the rule of thirds comes up automatically in the cropping tool? Don't double click it, or you'll crop it, but then if you haven't done any movement to the up, left, right, bottom little markers here, nothing will happen. But all you have to do is take the cropping tool and click to see the rule of thirds, okay? And I'm not going to crop this, of course. Now, let's go into the movement of this, because it's very important to me that you see the movement of this. Look at how the whole eye movement of this, where the eyes are in relationship to the logo. And yes, it has to have a logo. I want you to have a logo. So when I said um, headline, body text, graphic, or image, I would like it, the body text to include the logo, okay? Look at how the movement of the eye takes you right across into the logo. Look at how the whole movement of that tiger and going up across his head takes you up into the headline. Look at how the whole angle of the way the tiger is coming in not only draws you across the headline, but right down into the logo. And that's that curvature of the right-hand side of the tiger. Look at how the same thing applies to the left-hand curvature of the tiger. It takes you right up into the headline. Look at how the headline and you reading in the period draws you right into the top of the body text. And then vice versa, look at how going from the bottom, from the logo up, draws you into the headline. Movement is so important visually. Now let's turn off all of that movement and let's talk about proximity of information. He used graphic elements. Yes, his headline is pretty much independent. Yes, his graphic is independent. Yes, his body text and logo are independent. But what ties them all together? Look at those little nuances that are in the background. Look at how his lines and his circles and his little squares and his little um, graphic elements are so interesting and they draw you into the other elements, hence proximity of information. So important to your flow. And again, I'll hit command colon so you can see the margin widths. Look at how beautiful those margin widths are. Look at how the save me lines right up to the bottom of this. Look at how the logo and the eyes are very, very close to each other. Look at how the bottom of the body text, which does not have a widow, runs right to the bottom of the ears. Look at that line ragging and how gorgeous that line ragging is. What does gorgeous mean? Gorgeous means that there's nothing visually unacceptable or awkward. And work, um, uh, uh, here's a quick 
thing. If you had your text, if you had your cursor and you wanted to keep something in a paragraph, but you wanted to send the next word, like if Ben, if you wanted to take the word Ben and send it over to the next line, but not hit the return key, go shift return. And it'll take you to the next line. I know a lot of you know that. I just wanted you to hear it. Let's go right into Mallory's. See, the same thing applies to everything. Let's first look at Mallory's rule of thirds. Mallory's rule of thirds works beautifully where she has um, her rule of thirds comes in and then look at how yes that character is in the center that one eye but look at how the face is off the side it's not the center of the face that is the center of the rule of thirds and that's so important all right keep everything off balance here everything should be off balance now the reason why she did four graphics up here is because she was doing flags and those colors were very important to Zambia and that's okay because she has other graphics going on look at how the back let me hit the rule of thirds off. Look at how the background has other graphic elements, which makes it almost five or seven stripes. Okay, look at how um, she she has th yes she has two columns, but she has given you um, an atypical or an asymmetric top and bottom to those. And if you count the three columns, she has one, two, three. So she's used her logo to actually um, um, get rid of that you know not doing things in odd numbers that was my door that opened it was very strange a ghost just walked in anyway look at how in um the proximity i'm sorry in the hanging punctuation look at how her hanging punctuation is definitely in place look at how she has the periods away so she went to roman hanging punctuation on the third movie which is going to be a breakdown i'm going to tell you how to get started kind of and i'm going to show you a little bit more examples um but what I um, what I want you to understand is what applications you should use to create this whole process from stage one to the finish stage. Okay. Now I want you to see her movements on this because they are quite spectacular. Look at how the first movement of this. Um, let me turn off her Roman hanging punctuation line. Okay. Look at how the first movement takes you down that stripe and takes you right down this way right into not only the start of the body copy but her headline which isn't up on top her headline is on the bottom which I think is wonderful look at how the next one takes you from that side of the face again takes you right down the right hand side and where does it where does it sweep you where does it take you it takes you right into the body copy and of course near the logo and the headline next one that comes in okay this one if your eye visual starts from the bottom because it almost looks like it's graduated from light to, to a darker tone that takes you up into where the character is again crosses right through the center this one comes in now and look at how that one takes you straight down the stripe right into the logo and then takes you right off the page and it almost does a circular movement on this which is quite spectacular let's see how the right to left works with more right to left movement with a um, movement going right here to where the Z is and notice how the Z is just exactly almost where a non-literal alignment is coming through for the logo and for the right hand side of that stripe so if I turn all that off notice how those movements just make that ad look spectacular they really really do and then when you see how she actually married that with the other two is quite beautiful so uh, everything that I have talked about if I've missed anything I'll try to say them in class or I will try to um, talk about them on the third movie so thanks goodbye